So uh, the, in our previous video, we really, really talked about Moises Quesedo and Enzo Fernandez, and I've received some feedback from you about how these two players have failed to meet expectations at Chelsea. But in our video today, we're not going to point out at the problem, but try to come up with a remedy for this problem. And first, before we even start, we need to look at both of their starts prior to Chelsea. Now, on the right hand side we have the stats of Moises Quesedo while the left hand side we have the stats of Enzo Fernandez. You can clearly see that en uh, Moises Quesedo has better defensive stats while Quesedo has better on the ball progressive and passing stats indicating that these are two players who should effectively complement each other. But Looking further tactically in amongst uh, the two players, we are going to look at how Roberto Di Zabi used Moises Caicedo because Moises Caicedo has been the biggest victim of criticism in Chelsea's midfield, especially him receiving the majority of bookings in this position. So Moises Caicedo was paired with Alex McAllister, who has fitted quite well at Liverpool. But how did Caicedo play alongside Alex McAllister and how did this help improve Caicedo's overall game? We are going to do an in-depth analysis on this. Before we even start our analysis, do not forget to like, share and subscribe for more videos like this. So Moises Caicedo upon being signed by Chelsea for a club record fee of 115 million, we are going to look at how he played at Brighton, what tactical philosophies did Dizabi employ at Brighton, and what made him to command such a huge fee. Let's try and see from our tactical board. Now, Dizabi usually play, uh, paired Caicedo in midfield alongside Alex McAllister. And uh, Brighton's 4 2 3 1 shape, their main aim was usually to create overloads during build up. Dizabi's system is to control the games in their defensive third by having as many as seven players during build up. So when opponents decided to push high up to try and press Brighton. This is where Brighton really thrived because the Brighton's main aim was to try to pull players out of position and the key focus of these positions was the role of Caicedo and Alex McAllister with one pivot dropping deep when the opposite center back receives the ball. But Caicedo was quite profound in a way that he was able to receive the ball with his back towards goal under pressure and look to effectively play the other center back who would make the third man runs and look and appear to be free. Caicedo was also not afraid to pick these players in between the lines, especially the likes of Danny Welbeck and Adam Lalana, who will drop from the back line to play in midfield and look to receive the ball in these kinds of regions. Now, the position of Caicedo in this position in midfield was quite intelligent as his excellent ball playing abilities were being effectively used and the position of Alex McAllister enabled Caicedo to excellently read the game perfectly in a way that if McAllister will drop deep ready to receive the ball, Caicedo will be dropping further away to allow McAllister to receive the ball with little to no pressure, also enabling McAllister to also try to get the ball without any form of pressure. Now, this excellent build-up strategy is what generally made Brighton play quite well, and Caicedo actually looked like he's thriving in this position. Now, what separated Dizabi's Brighton from all the other teams? Now, Dizabi's Brighton main uh, strength was their ability to control games, especially by use of their center backs, center midfielders, and full backs. And this solid six uh, kind of system generated Caicedo what he clearly lacks at Chelsea. And this is the passing angles and the passing channels. Having a player such as Alex McAllister playing directly alongside him enabled Caicedo either to draw away pressure from McAllister, allowing McAllister to receive the ball and look to play penetrative passes, especially for the dropping in forwards, or Caicedo could receive the ball as a blind pass playing in behind the midfielder and look to progress the ball from the defensive third and creating those mini transitions, especially when you're proceeding with the ball on the higher echelons of the pitch. Now, the position of Moises Caicedo in this position also enabled him to effectively employ a counter press and try to play quick one-touch passes to his opponents 
to his uh, fellow teammates who are playing ahead of him. Remember, because he covered less space when he plays with McAllister, this enables him to save his energy and enables him to make clear, intricate interceptions as well as tackles. And this is the reason why when you pair Caicedo alongside another player, it enables Caicedo to thrive because he has an option of playing a simple short pass. Now, let's look at how Pochettino can try to improve Caicedo's situation, especially in possession. When Chelsea have the ball, how can he deploy him to get the best out of him? Now, during build-up as uh, Pochettino likes to play, he can try to employ a double pivot during build-up, with Enzo Fernandez dropping to play alongside him. Now, when one centre-back receives the ball, for example, the left centre-back, what can happen is that the left centre midfielder can push high up to withdraw pressure from the centre-back, while Caicedo can drop deeper, creating those dummy dropping ins so that they can enable the team to progress with the ball forward. Now, the main problem is not even during build-up. The main problem is in the middle of the pack, especially when Chelsea have settled possession. So what can Maurizio Pochettino do? Now, Pochettino in these kinds of instances should identify what he wants his front five to be. Does he want both his wingers Sterling and Cole Palmer to cut in so that the two fullbacks generate the width? In this case, this will be important, but Conor Gallagher cannot stay high up when this happens. And if Caicedo is the one who's dropping in between the two centre-backs, then Gallagher should immediately drop behind so that Chelsea can have a rest defence of five players with the ball and five players ahead of the ball. If Pochettino insists that one winger should stay high and wide, that is Raheem Sterling, while Gusto holds the width down the right, what should happen in this case is that he should ensure that Caicedo is always partnered, either with Enzo and a fullback inverting, that is the left back playing as the left-sided midfielder, that is in case Kukurela is playing, allowing Conor Gallagher to be the one who's pushing forward to occupy that half-space region. But because Maurizio Pochettino has identified that Enzo Fernandez's passing ability and progressive passes are much more important being employed in the higher phases of play, what should happen in this case is that they should rotate with Conor Gallagher, with Gallagher dropping to play alongside Caicedo while Enzo Fernandez looks to push up to occupy that position in the left half space where Maurizio Pochettino wants him to uh, operate, while the back line should also push forward to squeeze in the space between them and midfield to limit the number of uh, opponents who are able to occupy these positions. Now, if Pochettino insists on having Caicedo play in between the center backs during build up, then Kono Gallagher and Enzo should hold their positions in midfield regions and if he wants Enzo Fernandez to also push forward what he can do is he can either play uh he can either decide to play Moises Caicedo in midfield while Mark Kurela comes in to play as an extra third center back what if he decides to use two athletic Percy wingers that means that uh, Noni Madweke comes in. So when Noni Madweke comes in, either Pochettino can decide to have Kokurela attacking in midfield to play alongside Caicedo, while Malogusto or anybody who's playing as the right back tucks in to form a back three. Now, what can Pochettino try to remedy out of possession? That is when Chelsea do not have possession, where Chelsea have really struggled. That is what you're talking about. Now, without the ball is where Chelsea really struggle. Pochettino should identify whether his team is a high block, whether his team is a mid block, or whether his team is going to play in a lower defensive block, meaning that they are going to sit down, take in pressure, and look to hit the other team in counter-attacks. So, Pochettino needs to identify if he wants his team to press high, the press should be well coordinated. The spaces between the front line and the defense line should be as limited as possible. Now, when Chelsea are pressing, what we usually find is that they operate in more of two blocks, but rather Chelsea's defense line, back line, should push forward to compress that space. But when Chelsea are pressing in a mid block also, they should move with all the, uh, the entire team moving, meaning that even the front line and the back line are in the same line. 
if Pochettino wants to press aggressively high, he can maybe employ a 4-1-4-1 where both the front and midfield line push forward with Caicedo playing in between the lines and the back line also holding a high aggressive line while the goalkeeper comes out to play as a sweeper goalkeeper to prevent the ball from being played behind Chelsea's back line. Now, in this case, the forward line needs to be quite aggressive, denying opponents' time and space of the ball, with the forward looking to uh, mathematically nullify the ball to one side of the pitch. When Jackson can look to be pressing, force the ball to be played on one side where the, they can use the touchline as an extra defender and the goalkeeper can look to sweep up any balls being played over the top. And uh, this can be quite important. When Chelsea decide to sit in a mid block in a mid block meaning that they don't want to aggressively press the opponent high up the pitch what they should happen is that even in this mid block they still supposed to have aggressive forwards meaning that if jackson is the one who's leading the ball he should look to cut passing lanes from one center back and force the ball to be played on one side of the pitch and immediately this has been enforced what we should see is that uh chelsea can either decide to move to mark all the three midfielders with their three midfielders while Jackson looks to put pressure on the other center back, forcing the play to be played on one side where the winger can spring out and look to win the ball quick enough and look to transition the ball from defensive side to the attacking side. That is also another way that this can happen. If an opponent decides to have three players, maybe like Liverpool or Manchester City where they push their goalkeeper so high, what can happen is that uh, Conor Gallagher can either use his cover shadow to cover one player as Jackson looks to put in pressure for, uh, towards the goalkeeper and deny him any, any space with the ball and force the ball to be played on one side. When the ball is played to an outer centre back, now the midfielder can spring out looking to press the ball and force the ball to be played to the full back where the winger can effectively now uh, move from his position to go and press the fullback while the midfield decides to go man to man. The main aim is denying the opponent any space to play through the midfield and forcing the opponent to play on one side of the pitch. This limits the number of space that Caicedo has to uh, cover and also limits the number of players he has to pick in between the lines. And this will be quite effective. Now, when teams such as Manchester City or teams that are playing with a back three are playing, uh, Chelsea should also know how to adapt when dealing with a back three system. And the close proximity of both the forward and midfield line should be effective in being able to counter this system. If he decides to play with wide center backs, then the wide players should also be quick enough to move from the central zones and look to spring forward to press these wide center backs. And this is a way in which Chelsea can employ this. By having their front three go man to man with the centre backs, this denies them any time and space on the ball. And their midfielders can also push forward on the two double pivots to deny them any time and space on the ball, while Caicedo picks the other extra midfielder. If the ball is decided to be played onto the winger who will try to drift into these areas of space, then the fullback should not be afraid to move from his fullback position to try to come across and cover. The opposition winger but some teams are quite interesting where they will try to have their number nine drop deep the center back should not also be afraid to drop deep to receive the ball and look to counter attack now it's up to Maurizio Pochettino to decide how he would like to play these two players together. His main aim should be to maximize the output of both Enzo and Moises Caicedo. And to maximize their output, Maurizio Pochettino should not be afraid to effectively put his foot down to try and have a solid system that can accommodate these two excellent players. The question is... Will these systems be employed? Will Pochettino abandon his attacking strategy that is leaving the team exposed? Will he try to make adjustments to have Caicedo operate in a more friendlier way? Leave your comments in the comment section below and do not forget to like, share and subscribe. Thanks for watching.